welcome i am deepa elizabeth epen pursuing phd at iit madras under the guidance of professor raghunathan rangaswamy in this video i will provide a small window into the flow battery research undertaken at sene as an outline of this video i will introduce the system of all vanadium redox flow battery the initial modeling strategy which was a starting point of my research will then be explained followed by the various approaches for performance enhancement all vanadium redox flow battery or vrfp for short is an electrochemical energy storage system which stores energy in the form of chemical energy of its electrolytes it has two major units the storage unit which consists of the reservoir tanks storing the electrolytes and the power generation unit or the cell assembly where the electrochemical energy conversion occurs whenever the cell is being operated the electrolytes stored in the reservoirs are circulated through the cell or stack where the reaction occurs the cell is an assembly of various components it consists of a membrane usually nafion which is sandwiched between the graphite felt electrodes held inside gaskets graphite flow field on either side distribute the electrolytes into their respective electrodes the current collectors act as the terminals at both ends the entire assembly is held together by the end plates at both ends vrfp takes advantage of the fact that vanadium exists in four different oxidation states a sulfuric acid solution containing v2 v3 redox couple acts as the negative electrolyte and a similar solution of v4 v5 redox couple acts as the positive electrolyte a fully discharged flow battery will have v3 in negative and v4 in positive electrolytes charging is carried out by applying external potential to the cell during which v3 is converted to v2 and v4 is converted to v5 in the respective electrodes the protons produced moves through the membrane to the negative electrode the electrons move through the external circuit to the negative electrode the electrolytes are continuously circulated through the cell during operation with this working in mind we try to model the system to understand how the system potential varies during operation a lumped parameter model is considered assuming well mixed electrolytes of uniform concentration the surface and bulk concentrations inside the electrodes are thus equal the membrane is assumed to be fully saturated mass transfer loss crossover effects and side reactions are neglected for charging the electrolytes we need to apply a minimum potential e not cell corresponding to the reversible potential however because the activation and ohmic losses which accompanies the charge transfer we need to supply higher potential e cell to overcome these losses hence the charging potential is found as the sum of these three reversible potential is the theoretical limit and is the difference between the positive and the negative electrode potentials its dependence on the electrolyte concentration is given by the nernst equation activation over potential accounts for the energy required to overcome the activation barrier for the charge transfer at each electrode it is modeled using butler volmer equation which is again dependent on the concentration ohmic losses are the drops due to resistance to the flow of charge which is the protons within the membrane and electrons in the electrodes and current collectors thus we see that potential is a dynamic function of current density temperature and electrolyte concentration to find the same we apply mass balance at each component of the system within the reservoirs there is only mixing due to convection no reaction occurs inside the reservoirs the components of interest in the positive reservoir are v4 v5 and protons whereas for the negative reservoir we have v2 v3 and protons during charging in the positive electrode v4 is converted to v5 in addition to the convectional mixing of each component v4 has a consumption term v5 is generated protons will have a generation term and an outflow through the membrane similarly at the negative electrode during charging v3 is converted to v2 in addition to the convection mixing v3 is consumed v2 is generated 
the protons are neither generated nor consumed but there is an inflow from the membrane solving this system of differential equations we can find the variation of potential with time during the operation a unit cell vrfp of 25 cm square electrode area was set up for the experimental investigation of theoretical results and model validation we aim at enhancing the model to study various aspects of the system and explore ways of performance enhancement few of the approaches will be summarized here a correction to the open circuit potential estimation was added by considering contributions of proton water redox coupling thermal dependence of the open circuit potential is also included these are used to study the non isothermal operation of vrfp it was observed that the same change in state of charge can be achieved by supplying lower energy when operated at a higher temperature this concept was further explored to implement the use of flow batteries for low grade thermal energy capture using its electrolytes for high temperature operation in further attempts spatial variation of concentration within the electrodes was modeled as a 1d formulation yielding a system of differential algebraic equations this along with the inclusion of mass transfer losses is used to study the single pass operation of a vrfp which is expected to give a steady state constant potential output other directions of research include design optimization for performance enhancement especially for single pass operation studying multiple stacks and their network designs and developing a systems approach for the choice of technology with this i conclude on behalf of senai thank you for watching